So for those of you more familiar, you may understand the concepts of NAC. You may even have a NAC system in place presently, um, or you may be looking for a NAC system. You may be looking to migrate, or you may understand the concept but have never implemented one. But NAC is essentially going to be a system that's going to monitor any devices that are on your network to be able to be aware that they're on your network and to be able to identify them, classify them, properly authorize them, and give the appropriate level of privileges. Um, you also need to make sure that you have the appropriate visibility and security policies in place to actually manage your NAC system properly. Um, because of where NAC typically sits in the network, it is ideally positioned to, to meet these requirements and to fulfill those basic uh, needs to validate what is connecting to your network. One of the reasons that some companies do not have NAC implemented is because historically, with many legacy NAC solutions, it's challenging. So there's no doubt about it. Um, you know, people talk about it, CIOs talk about it, CISOs talk about it. Um, maybe it's a project that's never gotten off the ground. This because it's uh, not only perceived as complex, but it can be complex. Um, many systems do use a radius-based uh, um, solution at the core. Um, so that means that you have to actually have someone with the appropriate skill sets to actually implement 802.1x or radius um, on your network. It also means that many or all of your network devices will have to be configured and integrated with radius. Um, on top of that, if you do implement that kind of a solution, you typically will be introducing a single point of failure. So now high availability is required. That has to be configured and validated. And all of this basically leads to a very high touch, very lengthy deployment. Um, and sometimes these get started and just stall out. Um, one other item that is more indicative of a legacy NAC solution is, is the lack of really um, detailed information about devices, especially relative to IoT, um, and, and just basic fingerprinting is provided. So that may not be applicable or, or valuable enough in certain environments. So when we think of a next-gen NAC solution, we want to address um, most or all of those challenges that is experienced with a legacy NAC implementation. So some of those benefits um, and features of a next-gen NAC solution should be that you're not tied to any particular um, configuration requirement or enforcement method. So for example, no requirement for 802.1x. Make that optional. You should not have to go out and configure all of your network devices. Um, you should not be introducing a single point of failure. And you should be able to rapidly deploy NAC. If you have a cybersecurity plan that you want to implement and you're trying to get visibility right away, um, then you need to be able to do it quickly. You need to be able to do it with minimal staff. And then lastly, you want to have detailed information about what's connected to your network. So what we consider device platform intelligence goes beyond basic fingerprinting and provides that low-level detailed information about those devices. The Genian NAC solution we'll be talking about here more today um, can address all of this and, and really um, at the core is the device platform intelligence is at the core of this solution. So we talked about surveillance and then control and automation being the building blocks of NAC that correlate to cybersecurity requirements. And device platform intelligence really is at the core from a visibility standpoint and is uh, unique to this product relative to um, some of the other products out there. And the important thing about that device platform intelligence is the more information you have about the types of devices that are connecting to your network, the better decisions that you can make. Of course, there's, there's other features um, that come with the control component, uh, whether it be BYOD guest, IP address management, switch management, wireless security, endpoint management using agents, et cetera. Um, however, we consider the core of any good cybersecurity plan or NAC solution to be visibility. So when you talk about surveillance of the network, you want to make sure that you have the proper coverage, meaning it has to cover both wired and wireless, it has to cover all of the areas of your network. 
It also has to be able to cover managed and unmanaged devices. So just like, for example, an agent implementation is going to leave out BYOD and unmanaged devices, um, and especially IoT devices. So you want your coverage to span across the entire network and include all devices, all active nodes on the network. Then during that detection phase, you want to be able to know who, what, where, when, and how relative to connectivity, and of course, record compliance status uh, with any of the configured security policies. You want to be able to easily um, identify and observe non-compliant unknown rogue devices or any other misconfigured devices that may be um, sending out abnormal traffic or causing other network issues. So uh, device platform intelligence by Genians um, provides low level detailed information that can address these core components of any good network surveillance. So for this particular topic, we won't dig too deep into this because um, on this topic, we're gonna be covering this during our next webinar. So I talked about this being an overview. The next webinar will be a deep dive on device platform intelligence. So as a quick overview, um, there are some differentiators with this besides uh, against your legacy device fingerprinting, such as images of the actual device, which is very valuable in an IoT-centric environment, or really in any environment, having a visual depiction of the device. Um, information about the manufacturer, you get information about the country of origin, um, you get information about end of life, end of support. Um, there's also links to vulnerabilities built in already. So um, the Genian's Device Platform Intelligence Database in the cloud has already correlated all this information without having to have an external vulnerability scanner um, or other systems. And this database is maintained by a team of DevOps engineers at Genian. So uh, this is beyond fingerprinting and this will be the main topic of our uh, deep dive next webinar. Also, one thing to point out is no network configuration is required to obtain this information for nodes on your network. Um, I know that sounds too good to be true, but we'll prove it to you. So once you have visibility, then you have to control. So control is obviously a key component of network access control, but visibility comes first. Once you actually have that visibility, it's time to actually group your devices together and then tie those groups to enforcement policies and assign permissions. That's really what it's all about. Knowing what's on your network, grouping and classifying what is on your network, and that you know the accuracy of your visibility will depend on how well you can group those devices together, and then be able to actually tie specific permissions depending on that. So um, th that is actually the core of what you wanna do with network access control and with the control portion of the product is to be able to assign those permissions and it all ties backwards into your visibility. Um, with Genians, you have many different enforcement options. Um, we'll talk about some of those today. We won't get too deep into this because the webinar um, after our next webinar will be a deep dive on the control portion. But one such feature um, is security tag feature. So it's very easy to passively detect with Genius device platform intelligence, um, all the active nodes on your network, and then tie those to logical security tags in the system um, that can be assigned to specific permissions. Um, those can actually have start and stop dates. So this is a real common example here where you can actually create a contractor tag and tie it to a particular node um, on the network and that node, regardless of where it's connected or how it's connected, will have that specific level of privileges during that specific time frame. Um, all of this is implemented without any requirement for network device configuration, and you don't have to be a, a Cisco CCIE or some other network expert to implement this type of solution. More on that um, in our following webinar series. And last but not least, after visibility and control, you have automation. So the reason automation is important is to be able to leverage all the information you've gathered, all the information that you've grouped together, and be able to integrate with other 
security systems on your network um, to be able to share information and pull information from other systems. This just increases the value um, of your network access control solution and also increases the value and capabilities of your other systems that you integrate with it. Um, so typically you're looking at sharing information with external systems. One of the most common use cases is IP and user correlation. Um, and then be able to fill gaps for some of those other devices that don't have that correlation. And then receiving information from those devices, um, like an IDS, for example, to take information such as a device that has been hit on a malware threat or an active threat signature, and to be able to block that using the inherent blocking mechanisms built into network access control.